hugest contributor, and he's built the um, quick OSM plugin that allows you to process OSM data in QGIS. He will talk about various ways of using OSM in QGIS. That has been touched on in a quite of quite some of the talks today. For example, Brandon's or in in uh, Jochen's talk, um, they were all on about how in OSM data, when it is consumed, needs to be somehow transferred into GIS data so it can probably be used. So, um, welcome, Etienne, and please start your talk. Yeah, thanks a lot for the introduction. All right, yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yeah, my name is Etienne. Um, quickly, I'm working for 3D, so I'm a QGIS uh, developer. So uh, in my company, we do like a contribution in QGIS core, uh, mainly for QGIS server, uh, because we have our own open source project to publish QGIS project on the web. It's called Lismap. Um, so everything is on GitHub uh, for us. So quickly, um, I'm not sure exactly like with attending this kind of conference, if you are like already GIS users or like uh, beginners or experts in QGIS. So I, I say, okay, let's try to make a, an overhaul of how to use OSM data in QGIS. Uh, I don't pretend to know everything. So if you have some interesting links that I didn't show or whatever, you can still share them uh, to me uh, after the conference. It's just like some tools and some plugins that I'm using uh, sometimes in QGIS with OpenStreetMap. So quickly, what is QGIS? Uh, it's a powerful like a GIS application. Um, this screenshot is showing OpenStreetMap vector data with different uh, rule-based symbology for roads, uh, land use, uh, buildings. You have, can have labels. Um, QGIS can have like a lot of analysis that you can do. This is uh, some isochrones. Uh, there's a lot of other processing analysis that you can do uh, within QGIS. Uh, there are a lot of features like this is showing like a WMTS, like a temporal data um, with a temporal controller, uh, which is included in QGIS. So you can animate uh, data according to uh, like uh, some time frame. There is also a 3D viewer inside QGIS. So if you have some uh, data or like some uh, exclusion, you can uh, make some 3D views. Um, but between OSM and a GI software, there is a few differences. So in OpenStreetMap, you know there is node, way, and relation. But in GIS, it's point, line, and polygon, and both are not exactly one-to-one uh, -one match. Like uh, in OSM, a way uh, can be a GIS polygon according to its tags, or it can be a GIS uh, line string. Um, an OSM relation, you know, it's a mix of a lot of different geometries, points, lines, polygons. So not every relation can be read by a GIS software because it doesn't fit exactly like a, uh, for geometries and also attributes um, in GIS you have the concept of layer so a layer is defining like all fields and the geometry then you have the fields but in OpenStreetMap the layer doesn't exist it's every features are individuals and they they all have their own tags like keys and values which is de defining the property of this OpenStreetMap object. So there will be some difference like between OSM data, uh, like the raw OSM data that you can edit in JSON and the one that you can have in a GIS uh, format. And sometimes we need to like we need to wonder some questions like uh, when we do some analysis in QGIS, like do we want to have an up-to-date OSM database or is it just a static export uh, we don't need to keep updates or is it very important like to keep updates to have like the latest data uh, often do we work with small extent or like uh, like at the continent or like uh, at, in a city or like uh, a country 
by the way, well, yeah, what is small and big extent, like because, for instance, there is some online API and they, they will reject you if you ask them a, a, too much data uh, in a request. Uh, there is different density of data in different parts of the world. Uh, some people would like to do some analysis on contributions, so they want some metadata on the object, like who added it, the timestamp, like uh, when, uh, the version, is it like version one of the object, is it version five? Some people do care about these metadata in, for analysis, like contributions, and some people doesn't care because they just want, like, uh, they want to know that there is a road and buildings, they just want to make maps. Um, yeah, different purpose of the data, sometimes just for display, sometimes for analysis, some routing, um, geocoding. And also, according to the tools that we are using, sometimes you may not have all values, I mean, all keys defined in OpenStreetMap. You may have a subset. Um, so let's see like some, uh, some solutions and what like I use uh, personally in QGIS. So with QGIS only, I don't know if you know, but in the browser, you can have a, very easily the OpenStreetMap map pick style. If you go in your QGIS browser on the right, um, you go in XYZ tiles, and then there is OpenStreetMap. It's just the easiest solution, at, at least to display the mapnik uh, background. Um, then you can use some online tools, uh, which are transforming the data uh, from OpenStreetMap to GIS data. Uh, there are a few websites. The most famous one would be like download.geofabric.de. You can download uh, the data as shapefiles. There are very different websites uh, proposing this kind of transformation. Uh, one is uh, DataWorks that I use. It's covering France, but not only. There are also like some other countries, especially in Africa. Uh, but the nice one, it's like this screenshot is coming from DataWorks. So it's including as well the, the QML the QGIS symbology, so you open just a project and you have already the colors and the labels. So I should copy paste, ask him and copy paste this style. <laughs> it's quite nice. Um, you can find it on your national open data portals. Uh, like if you look in your country, you will find some uh, OSM data set already made uh, in GIS. Or you can also download like some raw OSM data, like OpenStreetMap XML files. Uh, that's the format from OpenStreetMap. You can load it in, in QGIS. It's loading uh, the files. Yeah, different website. Again, download.geofabric.de, uh, download openstreetmap.fr, but it's also worldwide coverage uh, to download uh, OpenStreetMap files. But when you open these files with QGIS, you may have a difference with the attributes. Like uh, you have, uh, I'm opening the points layer, and uh, then I want to do an analysis on some uh, fields from like keys from OpenStreetMap, but they, you might find them in the other tags uh, column at the end, and all keys and values are collapsed together. Um, if people are interested in another key than the one by default, you will have to do some processing. So this is called a nature field. Uh, it's just all keys and values are stored together in a single, uh, single field. Like other tags, you see it's a list of keys and values. So for that, you need to use in QGIS, the, you have uh, the processing toolbox showing a lot of processing that you can do within QGIS like buffering, um, join unions, intersections, etc. And there is one called uh, explode htor. So you give the layer, you give the field, like the other tags that we saw just before. And it will explode all the fields, all the keys that it found in the layer. And it will, um, yeah, make one, one field per key that it found in your layer. So this is convenient. Um, in QGIS, there are also QGIS expressions. Uh, maybe you saw this dialogue in QGIS. 
it's uh, very powerful. There are a lot of expressions that you can use to to do on the fly uh, calculations or in layouts. You can do like a lot of functions. And there are two fun like one function, htor to map. It's to read your uh, htor field that uh, the other tags that we saw just before. So you can get the description, for instance, like htor to map. Then you need to add. Uh, the field, and you can get then the specific key that you wanted uh, from your attribute table. Then with QGIS plugins, uh, we can do a few things. So there are like uh, 900 plugins, so we'll uh, see like uh, just a few plugins. So quick map services, I use this one quite a lot. Uh, it's, you can add some background layers. We saw that we can add like the Mapnik one uh, before, but with this plugin, you can add like open topo map in the background. There are plenty of layers which are available. Some are based on OpenStreetMap, some are not, but uh, there are plenty of layers. As a quick tip, uh, you need to go in the settings, because by default, there is not a lot of background layers enabled in this plugin. So you need to go in the settings, then more services, and then you need to click a button like get contributed pack. It will enable you uh, a lot of base map layers because otherwise it's not provided by default. So that's just a quick tip. So you can add like, yeah, these kind of layers. Quick OSM plugin. Uh, this one, you can download data uh, on the fly. Um, so it's asking like um, an API in the background called Overpass. Um, so I'm the developer of QuickOSM, so um, I'm busy, like during this QGIS code sprint, I was busy fixing bugs and doing some feature requests. So version 2.2.1 is on its way. I think I will release it maybe later during the first 4G. Uh, I wanted to do it before this conference, but so maybe it's not a good idea to release just before. <laughs> Let's polish things. So hopefully during the week I will make it. Um, so this plugin is targeting like um, different kind of users. So non OSM contributors, uh, but also some overpass experts who know how to write queries. Um, yeah, it's doing some magic in the background, like removing the other tags columns. Um, so let's do an overview of like the, the plugin. You can uh, do a quick query, so you can search in your native language. Uh, for instance, in English, uh, I want to look for bakery, so uh, I can, it's bakery. Uh, in Italian, it's panitaria. No, sorry, I don't speak Italian, but <laughs> how? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> In French, it's uh, boulangerie. <laughs> but in OpenStreetMap, like, you need to know that it's amenity, amenity equal uh, bakery. So now you can start typing in your native language like boulangerie, and it will automatically, oh, it's not amenity, sorry, it's shop. <laughs> uh, that's why it's good to write boulangerie. <laughs> uh, so it will automatically convert like uh, boulangerie to shop equal bakery. Um, there is also multi key value support. Um, like you can do many tags and then keys and values with and and or uh, operators. Yeah, for instance, French people love uh, their baguettes and the cheese. So I want to look for boulangerie. So I, I could add like shop equal uh, bakery. Then I can add another query with a or operator and then look for like uh, cheese shops, shop equal cheese. So this will make a query in the background like uh, either bakery or cheese. Map presets, um, that's the idea is to like, uh, I mean, it's to target people who doesn't know about OpenStreetMap and they want a map out of the box. Um, so for now there is a single map preset in QuickOSM it's like you have many layers uh, in this map preset, urban, and you have a symbology coming, you have different layers like roads, buildings, um, everything. 
and you have a map um, just ready to use. To create a map preset, um, so you can uh, you need a name, a description, then you can add different kind of uh, queries inside um, to download different layers like building and road. And you can also associate a QML style for the symbology, like how you want your roads to be displayed, your buildings and everything. So as I said, there is only one single preset for now, but I would like more presets. Like uh, for now, there is only urban, but I would like, I don't know, a topographic map, a bicycle map, um, someone during the QGIS cut sprint uh, asked me like, okay, would it be possible to add a natural water presets, like downloading rivers, uh, stream, like seas, and like, so we could imagine like exactly it's the purpose of these map presets, it's to have a ready, uh, ready to click button, like uh, downloading different layers, um, and with a QG styles automatically. So I wrote some documentation, like on the link, how you can add map presets. And if you like it, and if you use it, and you want to share it, uh, you can send it to me. I will add it in the next version. Uh, processing, I don't know if some people are used to processing in QGIS. It's a tool where you can like make a kind of model builder, like uh, adding different processing algorithm, um, like in a more complex model. So for this, uh, for instance, uh, I'm downloading like fire hydrants, reprojecting in meters, buffering like uh, 100 meters around my fire hydrants. So QuickOSM is able to, uh, to be included in a QGIS model. So this will um, only ask me in the final like the extent that I want to download and everything is already set up to download like fire hydrants within, within this processing model and applying the, the QG style uh, related to fire hydrants, for instance, with the 100 meter buffer. Local OSM file, that's if you don't want to use the API and you have a local OSM file downloaded like XML or PDF, you can use it in quick OSM, it will you can also parse and search for some queries uh, within the local file. It will avoid the overpass API timeout that you might have. Some quick tips. Um, if you have a layer downloaded with QuickOSM, you can right click on it and reload the query in a new file because you know that OpenStreetMap database is updated every minute. So if you have a query, I mean a layer coming from QuickOSM, you can right click, reload, it will create a new layer with the same query, the same extent, just to have uh, new data. Uh, you can search many places at the same time if you, uh, if you use this uh, separator, like semicolon. Um, default actions are provided in QuickOSM, so if you right click in, uh, in the attribute table or in a uh, on a feature on the map, QuickOSM will scan some fields, so if it's finding like some Wikipedia, Wikidata, some URL, or some mapillary uh, links, um, it will propose you to open um, the link. Uh, for instance, like here it found a website, so asking you like, do you want to open the website? There's also some default one, if you want to open JOSM or the OpenStreetMap browser with this feature. Uh, for instance, here, it's a point with a mapillary picture attached, so I can click on the feature, right click, um, and it will open the mapillary picture in my browser, um, looking in my attribute table, the mapillary ID. And if I want to open, like, about metadata about this node, Translations, well, you can translate if you want. Uh, there are already quite a few languages available. Um, yeah, the issue is with OSM relations. As I said, uh, relations is like quite tricky because the geometry is not always like uh, possible in a GIS, like uh, geometries in OpenStreetMap. I mean, about relations, it can be a mix of many things. So 
for now, like only relation root, multi-line string, multi polygons, or boundary can be open in QGIS like this. If you want to work with other relations, you need some post-processing, like uh, you need to deal to open the relation. Um, you can do it in different tools, but uh, you need some more post-processing. Geocoding, uh, that's new in QGIS 3.20. Before you were required to use a plugin, but now it's included. They, the open, the OpenStreetMap uh, community made a nominate team.qgis.org server. So now there is a batch geocoder that you can use uh, within QGIS processing. If you have a few addresses that you want to, to know. Um, and you can also use the locator bar at the bottom. I don't know if you use this, uh, this bar at the really bottom left corner of QGIS. You can start typing an address uh, and it will ask Nominatim in the background. So the OpenStreetMap database uh, to pan and zoom on the map. So before you could do it with a plugin, but no, no plugin is required. It's included in QGIS core. Um, if you want to do some routing, there is a plugin called uh, ORS Tools. It's uh, using online API. Uh, so this one, like in the screenshots, it's open route service. It's the same as in the openstreetmap.org website. You can choose um, uh, graph hopper or yeah, open route service. So if you want to do some isochrons or some matrix calculations. Um, about database, uh, if you go on the wiki, there are like there is a like a, a, a table showing you a lot of different tools to import OpenStreetMap data into a PostgreSQL database. Um, so this table will sum up approximately like which tool you might use if you want uh, an update table uh, database, uh, if you want metadata, or if you want like uh, all uh, all fields uh, from OpenStreetMap. So mainly it's OSM to PGSQL, which is like mostly used. Um, I use ImpoSM. Um, it's quite nice. I will show it. Um, that's for some experts, maybe. Um, I'm using uh, Docker if I want an OpenStreetMap database up to date uh, easily, I would say. Uh, it's a project hosted on GitHub that I use. Um, I won't explain too much what is Docker. That's another topic. Uh, but uh, it, the idea is like you have different containers running. Um, so the workflow is like you have your PDF file. You put, you put it in a folder and um, you only need to make run. If Docker is installed, that's the magical part of Docker is like everything is hidden from the end users. You only make run and you have a um, a PostgreSQL database with your OpenStreetMap data inside, and it's updated uh, automatically every two minutes by default, but that's possible to change. Um, so that's using ImpoSM, so to import OpenStreetMap data into PostGIS, so it's creating a lot of tables for you uh, with a mapping. There's a lot of configurations. Yeah, you can add SQL triggers, views, uh, there is some default styles also included. Uh, so QGIS will detect these styles and will load them uh, when you add the layer from PostGIS. Yeah, and vector tiles, it's new since QGIS 3.14. Um, there, is, there is a presentation, I mean, there were a presentation yesterday, so I invite you to watch the replay. Uh, it's better, it was a proper uh, presentation from uh, yeah, map Tyler yesterday, and they will be at the Force 4 g as well. So just uh, better to ask them about vector tiles. Yeah, so that's it. If you have some questions or like if you have some links that I didn't know about OpenStreetMap, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Etienne. There weren't any questions uh, posted online. Uh, does anyone here in the room have any questions for Etienne? So um, you're using the Overpass API to fetch information from the OpenStreetMap database. 
You mean? Uh, yeah, just verifying as a the data source. Yeah. Um, is there or do you plan any support for um, historic queries like the diff support? Um, you mean from overpass? Yes. Um, we have the overpass experts <laughs> <laughs> just coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in QuickOSM, we can have a panel showing you like uh, the overpass query that you, you want to you want to write. Uh, but I guess according to the server that you have selected, uh, your overpass server will uh, send you back the data, so it should work. I I didn't try, but uh, it depends on the overpass server. Um, but yeah, it should. You can write there's a timestamp uh, at the time that you want the data. <laughs> we can check that. <laughs> Hello. Um, first of all, thanks for all of the work you are doing for Quick OSM. I'm using it some of the times. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, for the styles, like you had the meta style. Uh, this is just. Um, a kind of a filter to download just this kind of thing. So it's also, uh, you can also attach, when you are creating this style, you can also attach the the layer, uh, the the styles. Like yeah. you download and you also have the styles for the all of the different attributes that will be downloaded. Thanks. Yeah, that's the purpose. You can attach QG styles to the query. Uh, there is a, a way to name your files. Uh, I've improved that in the latest version of uh, of the plugin um, to make a kind of uh, like a helper to know how to write the name of the file. But then QGIS will look for these files and if you find it, it will load it. Okay, thank you. So in terms of the backdoor tile, so uh, can I can I make the uh, ZX uh, ZXY backdoor tile uh, in QGIS in uh, OpenStreetMap? Sorry. Uh, um, so the, in QJS. Yeah. So can, can I make the OpenStreetMap vector tile? At the, this is a, a ZXY a ZXY tile. There is a support here yeah, for vector tiles. So and uh, the, um, do I have to? Uh, do, can I in, can I download the vector tile for the uh, my local uh, local laptop? Yeah, there is the processing algorithm as well. Uh, to download local, uh, yeah, the file locally, and you can generate them as well. Uh, you can generate uh, the types if you want. Okay, I'm sorry, we we have to continue with Grant now, but you, maybe you can just chat him up outside later on to get any further questions answered. Thank you.